Finally, it's good to be back. What is she doing here? Is she the floozy you left me for? Who are you calling a floozy, dum dum? A? Hey? Alexa, you say something. Leave me out of this. Where have you been anyway? Did you go back to school to learn some skills that are actually useful? Ouch, do you need some ice on that burn? I thought you didn't want to get involved. This is too easy. All right, ladies, can we at least try to get along? Fine. Fine. Yeah, whatever, brah. Hold up. Days go by when I pull up. They all on me like a once. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So here it is, or here they are, the 2023 Apple HomePod in white and midnight. Now, as most of you will know, the original HomePod, the one that came out in 2018, was discontinued in 2021 due to poor sales, even after Apple reduced the price from $349 to $299. The smaller and much cheaper HomePod mini was not discontinued and sold very well. So why would Apple bring back the large HomePod less than two years after discontinuing the original? Why would they think this one will do better? What's different? And is it actually worth buying one? My short answer is no, it's not worth buying one. My long answer is, but it's worth buying too. Let me explain. So let's first have a look at what's in the box and what's different. So in the box, we will find the HomePod itself, of course, some documentation, no Apple stickers. I know some of you will find that important. And we have a separate braided cable. Emphasis on separate because as you may remember, the previous HomePod came with a non-removable cable, which I've always found a strange design choice, especially since you might want to route the cable through a desk or a cupboard. Well, at least that will be much easier now that the cable is detachable. The HomePod still comes in white, but it also comes in a new color, which is called Midnight, as opposed to the space gray color in the previous model. And this Midnight color resembles the Midnight on the M2 MacBook Air, maybe even a bit darker. The touch interface is slightly sunken in and the interactive part now covers the entire circle, which does look more appealing. It still doesn't display any usable information, but it does show when the HomePod is listening and responding and it looks a bit nicer overall. Another small difference is that the bottom is now flat as opposed to the indent on the original. Speaking of the bottom, you might remember Staingate, where the white speaker left very visible and permanent white circles on wooden tabletops. Well, that is now gone, at least in my experience. I know Marquez Brownlee still showed a hint of a white circle in his video, but I specifically left it out all night on this wooden countertop and no staining is visible whatsoever. Maybe it has to do with a specific type of wood, so just keep an eye on it. There are two new sensors, temperature and humidity. I don't have a thermostat in the office, so that's a nice thing to have. Obviously, this becomes even more interesting and relevant if you have more smart devices connected to Apple Home so that a certain temperature or humidity level would trigger an action, like turn on the fan or the heating. It also has a new sound recognition feature whereby it will listen for sounds like smoke alarms, etc. And when those go off, it will notify your phone. I guess that could be useful if your smoke detectors are of the dumb, AKA not smart variety, so you can call emergency services a little bit quicker, and it fits in with Apple's move towards more safety-driven features, such as the ones we've been able to see on the iPhones and the Apple Watch. What didn't change is the fact that the smart assistant is still Siri. I've alluded to it in the intro of this video, you know, jokingly, but let's face it. Out of all the smart assistants in this studio, Siri is still a little bit dim. Let's put it this way. If I was gonna cheat on my test, I wouldn't sit next to Siri. I would sit next to Google or Alexa. I'm not sure why the other assistants are so far ahead of Siri in the brains department, but they are. So I would definitely not buy this thing primarily as a smart assistant. So if we aren't buying the HomePod for Siri, then what's the major selling point? And the answer is, audio quality. While the HomePod is certainly the dumbest of all smart speakers in this studio, it is by far the best sounding. The HomePod actually has fewer speakers than its predecessor. It has five tweeters as opposed to seven in the previous model, and it has four mics instead of the six on the previous one. By the way, this could be one of the reasons Apple is trying its luck again with the HomePod in 2023. The original one launched in the middle of a chip shortage, and the new one uses fewer raw materials by reducing the number of components, which also allows for a lower price. Another theory is the fact that the HomePod now supports Matter. When the original launched, there weren't that many products available that worked with HomeKit, but once the Matter protocol becomes mainstream, people will need a hub, and Apple might just be thinking ahead in this regard, given the fact that the HomePod could function as that central hub. Anyway, despite the fewer speakers, the sound quality on the new version is supposed to be a little bit better.
Unfortunately, I don't have the old HomePod here to compare it to, but there are plenty of other videos around where you can listen to that comparison. With that said, I do believe that audio examples in YouTube videos should be taken with a grain of salt. The audio is recorded through different types of microphones, processed by different types of preamps, run through different types of editing software, and then butchered by YouTube's compression. So if you truly want to know what it sounds like, it's best to just head to a store and have a listen. What I can say is that the microphones are phenomenal. I can say something from across the studio and Siri will hear it every single time. Now, a lot of people on the internet are raving about how great the audio is on these new HomePods. But to be completely honest with you, I don't think the audio is that amazing. It's quite heavy on the bass, and if you're into that, that's fine, but for me personally, it's a bit much. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a good speaker, but you could probably buy a better Bluetooth speaker for the same money. Now, obviously, that speaker wouldn't be a smart speaker, and the HomePod does have a few cool tricks up its sleeve, if you're in the Apple ecosystem. It uses computational audio to scan its environment and to adjust the audio to that, so that's pretty cool. It connects seamlessly to other Apple devices, and one of my favorite features is Music Handoff, whereby you can start listening to a song on your phone and then continue listening to it on your HomePod by simply bringing your phone close to it. But you can only do that with Apple Music. If you mainly use Spotify like I do, you're out of luck. Even if you would ask Siri to play a track from Spotify, it won't work. You can still stream Spotify to the HomePod manually from your phone, but that is obviously way less fun and not as convenient. Hey guys, a quick word from the editor here. So I was wrong. You can in fact hand off your music from Spotify to the Apple HomePod. What you can't do is ask Siri to play from Spotify or set it as your default player. And honestly, I think it's a little ridiculous that I can't just ask Siri to play something from Spotify when both Google and Alexa let you do that without any problems. You can even set it as your default player. So if the smart assistant is no good and it's a good but not great smart speaker, why would I recommend anyone to buy two of these? Because in my opinion, the real HomePod magic happens when two HomePods are paired in a stereo setup, especially in a TV or a home theater setup. While the audio out of a single HomePod is pretty good, the audio coming from a pair of HomePods is really, really good. I recently reviewed two of Anchor's Nebula laser projectors on the channel. I'll put a link to that video in the description in case you're interested. And especially their 4K projector has an amazing image. Now for the review, I set up a little home theater setting back there in the studio kitchen and I decided to leave it up. So I was looking at some audio options and when I found out that you can pair these two HomePods and stream to them from the Apple TV and have them sound amazing, instead of returning my HomePod, which I initially intended to do because I wasn't super impressed by it, I decided to do the opposite and order a second HomePod and an Apple TV 4K, which by the way is definitely worth it and which I had very wrongly dismissed as an unnecessary device and I will do a separate video on that. So feel free to subscribe if you wanna follow up on that stuff. Anyway, I'm so glad I ordered that second HomePod because man oh man, does it work well. There is no latency noticeable whatsoever. It sounds truly amazing and you can even play your TV audio or the audio from your projector's own operating system through the Apple TV box's HDMI connection by means of a process called ARC. You just go to the settings, choose the HomePods as your default speakers, and then set the audio return channel to ARC, and bam, the Apple TV will now send all the audio to the paired HomePod, sounding absolutely phenomenal. And of course, you can also listen to music this way, which makes the experience an entirely different one. So yeah, in the case of the new Apple HomePod, two is definitely better than one, so much so that I would not recommend getting a single HomePod, but I would absolutely recommend getting two. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.